questions because we actually had you on Indie Mayhem show previously, so we asked all the real questions. There. Are we live right now? Uh, we well, we're streaming. We've been streaming for a bit. Oh God, it's on YouTube. Okay. Hi, hi. This is Dan Hooven. He is the photographer for IWC International Wrestling's whatever uh, wrestling. I thought it was Internet Wrestling Community. Mm. <laughs> it's all those things. <laughs> it's all those things. Yeah, exactly. Dan Hooven, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? Can you tell me about your your creator wrestler? Yes, uh, I I had no mercy on N64. It was the greatest wrestling game ever, next to Royal Rumble uh, in the arcade. Uh, Taz was actually 443 and 0 in his run on No Mercy N64. Uh, wow. He is the greatest wrestler of our generation, to the extent that I have a tattoo of him on my body. Back wow. up, back up question. I know you're from Philly. How geeked out were you uh, filming Tommy Dreamer uh, the other night with the uh, with the leg situation? Oh, that was that was awesome. I uh, actually I remember talking to uh, Justin Plummer, the alpha male of Pittsburgh, uh, the Steel City Saint, and he said, "Pretty cool, you got to meet Ric Flair." I said, "Yeah," I said, "But I'm from Philly, man." I said, "Tommy Dreamer is my Ric Flair," so uh, it was it was a, a mark out moment, as they call it. Nice, nice. Does anybody else? Uh, somebody else have a question for Mister Hooven? Uh, I have a question. All right, Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, what? you have Hi, the floor. Doing, um, what is the greatest wrestling photo you've ever seen? The greatest wrestling photo I've ever seen? Mm -hmm. It was probably in that short-lived magazine, World of Wrestling, not to be confused with Whip It Out Wednesday. And it which was, is, Which is what we're going to call it now when we talk about it. it was we, a, we mean this magazine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. What the greatest wrestling magazine ever. I loved it. It was it was the best. Stamps cover and everything. Mm -hmm. And the greatest picture I remember was I have to say it was Dawn Marie in ECW when she was just ridiculous hot bending over and you could see every every outline underneath her skirt. Um not to be a sicko, but I just remember saying that was pretty cool and then my mother saw that on my wall and told me I wasn't allowed to to, to get that magazine <laughs> Oh, anymore. I had that one. The the pinup, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I have that one somewhere too. Yeah, I'll pay good I'm money for that. That was on my wall when I met my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, who's next? All right, I got one. Okay, if you were to become a legitimate in the ring professional wrestler, what would your gimmick be? Well, it's funny. Um, many many moons ago, when I was uh, actually in really bad shape, but you know, could lift a lot of weight because I have short arms. I attended the uh, Fight Academy down in Philadelphia for a month. And and Johnny Cashmere, who was the lead trainer of that, it was affiliated with CZW and Pro Wrestling Unplugged at the time, he had this vision of me teaming with an all-American guy, but putting me under a hood and calling me Ty Bo, T-H-A-I. And it was supposed <laughs> to be an Asian version of the Simon Dean gimmick. Wow. So that's what, that is what he, he proclaimed. I don't know if I was ever to do wrestling, I would want to do. I, I don't know. I'd rip off Taz's gimmick with the whole, you know, <laughs> low, you know, low center of gravity, walking out with a towel, just that big fight feel. Even though he was like five foot seven, um, you know, any and I would wear tights because I think everybody should wear tights, not the plastic, plastic shorts and the Lincoln Park music. I love wrestling <laughs> tights. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, but I've been going to indie shows for a long time, and I always really I remember Jimmy Rave was always the one I would always say, you know, damn it, Jimmy Rave, put some tights on. You're so talented, but you wear these huge like bugle boy plexi leather pants and come out to don't breathe. Ugh. <laughs> wow, uh, Wheels, how about you? All right, it's this kind of fits in with the whole. What kind of music would you come out to as a wrestler since you don't like that poppy type music? What kind of music would you come out to? I, I don't know. You know, it's it's actually not – it's not the poppy music. It just I think like you really need to stick out on the indie scene. Um, and the most successful ones are the ones that, that have like that just different entrance where they're not trying to be, you know, tough guy number one, tough guy number two coming, coming out. Um, I don't know. I mean I just – my running music is a lot of just regular pop music, uh, rock music. I love, I mean, War Machine by Kiss, obviously, because that was Taz's old thing. But uh, I don't know. There, there's a new song I really like. Uh, 
called The Bomb. It's from the Dead Island 2 soundtrack. It's on the trailer for that. It's a real good song. But something upbeat, you know, something that doesn't scream like death metal or anything. I just, I don't think people look at me and think death metal. I'm like five foot seven on a good day and pretty vanilla. <laughs> so I'm not going to scare anybody right away. <laughs> awesome. Did I miss anybody? Um, I got one. Okay, Bobby. My usual question. Who's your favorite wrestler currently and of all time, even though we probably already know who's your favorite of, of all time. time? It's obviously Taz. <laughs> currently the greatest wrestler. Now, I, I don't want to include Brock Lesnar on this because Brock Lesnar is the ultimate. I think he is the last real thing on WWE. Like he's the one guy that that I think is is just a monster. So currently I'd say Brock Lesnar, but he's on what, six, seven times a year. So mm-hmm. I'd say my favorite current full time wrestler is Ryback. Because oh no he he's jacked <laughs> he has a great gift and you know what he would have been a main event superstar in the eighties he was mm-hmm. he's wrestling in the wrong decade and out of all the people on the WWE roster he's the only one that would scare the living hell out of me if I ran into him in an alley you look at Ryback and you're like this dude's crazy he's jacked he could legitimately beat you up on any given day and I feel like the fans the internet fans oh, crap on him but I think he works hard I mean. And he's just, he's strong. Like, he's just a beast. He's Brock Lesnar light. Okay. I can see that. He's everything Goldberg wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> he won't drop to a cattle prod. Well, <laughs> never put anything past creative, my friends. <laughs> All right, Dan Hooven. He's at Daniel Hooven on the Twitters. Also, you can find out a lot of his great work at IWCWrestling.com. Most of those pictures are yours. Actually, like all your pictures at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, you know what? I, I will say I do like – I'm very thankful that everybody gives credit just because I'm not one of those people to put a watermark on them mm-hmm. uh, just because I find it so obnoxious when you're looking at pictures and then it's just like, you know, one quarter of the picture has an ugly emblem on it that just has a stroke effect from Photoshop. John Doe photography. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I do not do it for that. I, I'm just happy that they're used somewhere good. Awesome.